Alright, today I'm going to show you how to fix your uh, Famicom disk system kind of inexpensively. And uh, I looked all over YouTube and tried to look on the net and stuff and see if I could find a video on how to do it, but I think this might be the first one. So, anyway, the tools that you're going to need is you're going to need uh, some kind of black marker uh, for your making marks on your spindle. You're going to need some kind of uh, exacto knife or hobby knife. Uh, the key point is to make sure it's sharp. This one is not that sharp, so even uh, one of these handy ones you can use. Uh, you'll need something like a hexagon or uh, something that's really thin, um, uh, like a screwdriver, uh, to punch out uh, one of the pins. you need a pair of tweezers to help you set uh, some gaskets in place. Uh, you'll need a small screwdriver, um, larger screwdriver. You'll need a Allen key to take off the top part, and uh, a ruler to measure the uh, cut that you'll have to make, and uh, some oil, uh, preferably not the stuff that's next to your bed or that's laying next to your tissue box, something that's a light oil. And this is something that you can get at uh, probably most hardware stores, at least that's where I got it. It's just kind of like a plasticky kind of rubber. Um, it's not really, uh, well, that stretchy, but um, it's uh, solid and durable. And uh, I've used this uh, a lot. I used it on all of my uh, Famicom disk systems. and. So far, the oldest one I have, it's been six years and still no problems, so uh, that's what you'll need for that. So, let's get started here. Um, with the first part, what we do is uh, we use our large screwdriver, and uh, on the bottom here, you're going to have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws. You're going to wind up taking those out. I've already taken them out, so this is just going to pop right off. Uh, one other thing that you realize is once you get this off, um, the inside here is going to look like this. So the next step what you want to do is for this tray you want to remove the two screws in this tray. Um, you can use the same screwdriver you just used and the tray is going to come out like this. Make sure you don't pull on the tray too much because it's held in by these two wires and you don't want to break your connection. So. Just kind of set it a little bit aside, and your front piece here, you're gonna just gonna pop this one right off, and it should slide off with no no problem. So now you have the main bits of your uh, your disc system here. Um, once you get inside here, you're gonna notice that uh, there's one, two, and then down here there's three and four uh, screws holding your uh, system in place. So take those screws out and your tray is going to pop out like this. Well, once again it's connected here by these wires in the back. So this wire here, this cable down here, what you want to do is hold the system firmly with one hand and then with your two fingers try to wiggle the cord off the back and it's going to be really tight but Try not to wiggle it too much or you might bend it down and it should come off like that. Make sure you double check the back here and make sure that none of these pins are bent. Um, when you put it back together too, make sure that you get it in there correctly and you don't bend any of these pins. These are very important. So, once you get that off, you're going to uh, see on the front cover here there is two screws holding this front plate on. Um, you're going to take this screw and the screw over here off and this plate should slide off just like that. Um, and on the bottom, when you flip it over, you'll see that there's one, two, three screws here. So take these three screws out. I still have one in the bottom, so I'm going to take that one out. And make sure you keep these screws somewhere in a good place. Um, I got them sitting up here as long as you don't lose them and your back plate will slide off and this is what the bottom of it's going to look like this one already has a working belt in it so I'm not going to take this one apart again but I have one that looks uh, identical to it and uh, 
bring that one up here. So this is what the bottom should look like if you have a disc system that uh, the belt is bad on. You might see parts of the belt still sticking here and parts of the belt still wrapped around the uh, bottom part here. Uh, that's really normal. And uh, what you'll do is, if you can, try to peel that belt off, whatever's left. You'll probably see some belt remnants around this pulley here. And uh, if you do, try to use a, a flat screwdriver or you can even use your uh, your knife here and uh, try to scrape away as much as you can try to get it clean um, afterwards try to use some sort of uh, oil or grease remover on it and get it as nice as you can and uh, it'll save you a lot of hassle well, the next thing you want to do is inside this one you're going to notice that there will be three screws uh, there will be a screw here, here, and here and you'll take those three screws out and when you do you'll notice it'll probably have a little bit of tension on it uh, the reason for that is on the top here uh, there's the uh, cable running to the top part and uh, the unit up top uh, if you can uh, there's a small tab here what you want to do is kind of bend that up you can use a pair of pliers you can probably use uh, um, a screwdriver or something like that to bend it up and then you want to slide this cable out make sure it's kind of loose and uh, on the back here you'll have two wires that are connected to your motor you have to be very careful uh, this is just parts so um, it's a good example of what can happen if you're not careful uh, when you go to take this bottom part out if there is too much tension on the back here and you don't slide these cables over like this, what you'll wind up doing is actually ripping them out of the motor and causing yourself a lot of hassle. So make sure that uh, before you start pulling on it, you slide these over and around if you can. Um, if you want to, you can bend this up here, but uh, make sure you get those out of the way. And you should be able to slide this part up about that far or so. And you'll notice on the bottom here, uh, once again this is parts so it doesn't have everything there's a switch here there's also usually a switch here and here that uh, you'll have to uh, be careful of when you go to put it back together um, so once you get those out of the way kind of move it a little bit out of the way and in this mechanism down here you'll have one two and then three screws take those screws out and flip this around again and looking at the front here, you can see the spindle. Um, it's probably a little hard to see with my finger. And inside here, if you rotate it, you'll find that there's an Allen uh, or a grub screw that you can use your Allen wrench for. So what you want to do is take your Allen wrench and slide it in here, get it inside the grub screw, and twist it counterclockwise a couple of times and while keeping the allen wrench inside here you want to slowly lift up and if you're good you can pull this out with your allen wrench um, on the bottom here there might be a washer a really small plastic washer if there is make sure that uh, you keep that with it if it's still on the spindle itself you can pull it out with your tweezers so, put that one down there and now you have your mechanism uh, free uh, so what you'll do is you'll flip it back over here and when you pull this out you're gonna hear a clicking sound usually and this one didn't click so much but you'll have your mechanism uh, the reason why it usually clicks is uh, this whole front unit slides back like that um, it's not a, a bad thing or anything like that. It's pretty normal. Um, just make sure that you don't mess with this spring here. Don't try to stretch it. Don't play around with it. Don't take it off. You don't need to touch it. Um, so this is the beginning part here. Uh, we're running a little bit low on video, so I'll make a second half for this here in a second.